For more on today's violence and what it means, we are joined once again by Michael Wahid Hanna, who follows Iraq closely as a fellow at the Century Foundation here in New York. We were just reporting that this was the least deadly month for civilians and for military personnel, the month of July. And I'm wondering just the significance of today's attacks. How bad are they in that contrast? Well, we're likely to see bombings and some level of violence in Iraq for years to come. And I'm pleasantly surprised at uh, the transition in terms of uh, Iraqi primacy, uh, in terms of uh, securing urban centers. And so uh, I don't think this is going to have an appreciable impact on uh, U.S. and Iraqi planning at this point, because again, they haven't had strategic impact. They haven't uh, undermined or threatened the Iraqi government at this point. The New York Times is also reporting today that there was a senior American military advisor in Baghdad who essentially said the time had come for the U.S. to declare victory in Iraq and to go home. Is that realistic? I think more importantly is, is that the memo raises lots of important points and, uh, and perhaps breaks us out of a bit of complacency in regard to Iraq policy, which has been somewhat driven by, uh, solely by timelines and hasn't thought about the big picture, about the costs of the U.S. presence, uh, the potential for increased friction on the ground, the limitations on what the U.S. can do uh, I mean, it's not our country. The Iraqis are increasingly sovereign, making decisions. And I think it's important that we think about uh, what we want uh, the U.S. presence to look like and whether we can afford to have a smaller presence and perhaps shift to a more diplomatic approach. And that that might be a way to, uh, to create a more sustainable framework for U.S.-Iraqi relations going forward. It definitely seems that there's been a significant change since the implementation of the new Status of Forces Agreement. And that, if I read you right, perhaps the longer we stay, the greater the opportunity for there to be disagreements between our two governments. Well, I mean, you know, part of it is public posturing. It's an election year. Uh, Maliki and the government want to be seen as the providers of security, uh, and uh, they want to be seen as nationalist leaders. And so there's definitely going to be some friction, but there's also real friction in terms of uh, the Iraqis taking control of their country. And frankly, that's something we should be happy to see. And uh, we should be bigger than taking umbrage at rhetoric. Uh, and obviously, there's some awkwardness right now in terms of defining proper roles, how, that, how the militaries will interact. And so there is going to be some tension. And those are things that could increase in the future and maybe undermine uh, the relationship and the interaction between the United States and Iraq going forward. Quickly, uh, Secretary uh, of Defense Gates said that perhaps we could accelerate the withdrawal of troops next year. Is today's bombings, are they likely to change that thought? I don't think so. Not if, 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 uh, if security levels are maintained at, this, uh, at, at these types of levels. Uh, I don't think we'll see a rethink because, again, they haven't had strategic effect uh, and they don't threaten the government of Iraq at the moment. Michael Wahid Hanna, thank you very much. Thank you.